previously on the Resurrection series. After reviving the seemingly disbanded team, Damage enters the Dallas PSP event with their core players from 2014 and two new acquisitions. The team perform below their own high level of expectation, yet still qualify for Sunday, losing to Houston Heat in the quarterfinals. Leaving the event the realization that they still have a lot to learn about managing themselves to once again become successful slowly begins to sink in. It was just devastating. We didn't think we were going to be able to play this year. And out of hundreds of messages, one stood out from Virtue, and he just said, let's see if we can make something happen. We're all well, best friends. We're, all, we're probably the one team that all lives right here. If it would have folded out, I'd have quit. Stay home, Dad. It's all about playing with all your best friends. Give me the opportunity. I'm ready. But I was born ready though. My mom told me that, so you know how it goes. Man. Oh, I'm so excited. My legs are shaking. You have no idea. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to kill people. on the phone to Jason and he was like, we don't have no money to, to make it happen. I said, well, whatever I got to do to help you guys, I'm all in. It's almost like going back to our roots. Don't have as big of a budget. Every decision is, you know, a team decision now too. It's really just hanging out with your buddies and playing paintball. And not even your buddies, your best friends. I've played with the same people since I was probably 16 years old. Us being able to stick together is huge. Fifteen has been a turbulent year for tournament paintball, a statement made all the more staggering by the fact that we are only halfway through the season. Dallas heralded the final event of the PSP as we know it, and the National Expo League, better known as the NXL, was reborn. Cleveland would be the first event for the NXL, and despite having some of the most experienced staff on the tournament circuit, onlookers were keen to witness whether the event was deemed a success. However, they weren't the only ones that were out to prove a point. Jason Edwards, at only his second event as player manager for Damage, a team that incidentally has always had a full-time manager since its inception, was intent on showing that Damage still had what it takes to win under their new system in the new league while still having more fun than previous years. Damage wanted to implement this system of being able to manage themselves and determine the way that the team was ultimately run. Despite vast experience on field, on the other side of the netting, they are still continuing to learn the art of managing the roles and personalities that this fresh challenge represents. Not unlike a new National Paintball League would have to do. Pickles back, so life is great. Have the pickles. Have the pickles. Have the pickles. Have the Slimming down. The Batkins. Good diet. Not really. A lot of workout. I got a lot of spare time since I don't have a job anymore since the military fired me. But Timmy's happy, right Tim? Happy I'm back. The food, my boot camp caused a lot of stomach issues. And uh, they just they just let me go. Well, gave him some anthrax when he went over to boot camp. Sent him right back home since he was sick. So all you gotta do is poison him and he can't go anywhere. Oh yeah, I think Timmy called some favors in or something, had him had him lay something in me, so I had to come back. If he ever tries it again, he's getting something more lethal. Gotta have him scared for life. I've not seen Jacob yet, so it's a good day. Oh, hello, man. 
make all those guns clean? No. That's what I love. <laughs> That's what I love. Yeah, they get the room together this event too. Mm. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, I got a new pick. <laughs> we got a new pick. LP's got new sheets. We do. Just gonna have to start changing them every day. Yeah. I'm gonna talk to the lady. <laughs> Okay, works for me. I ain't going in there. Just arrived in Cleveland. We got uh, two new kids on the team. Two new guys are really good. Lewis is no longer with our team, uh, but we still have Kyle Berry. And right now we're just a virtue. We're good to go. We're excited. Check it. Those are the sexiness. Those are fresh. Those are fresh. You excited? Hell yeah, dude. I'm stoked. Can't wait. First professional paintball tournament. It's gonna be a bloodbath in here. Mm. Yes. With the Timmy Probe Sig. That's pretty sweet, bro. Oh, what did yeah. I say? Yeah. I don't look at pictures. Nope, he doesn't have one of these. I don't. I don't. He's jealous. That's a good setting sandwich. After spending some time acclimatizing to the event and checking out all the new Tampa Bay damage gear, they head over to the pro field to begin dissecting it. Ready? Ready? Should we bomb already? Should we bomb aftershock? Should we bomb aftershock? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the D side in the middle, the area in between that is open. The D side wire is congested, but it's a lot of shorter bunkers, so there should be a lot of rundowns and stuff. Let's go ahead. We did that some when you were running out shooting to the corner. You can <clears throat> tell if I'm trying to go up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you I, can shoot that. Exactly. Yeah, like my main thing was always to shoot, shoot at the for sure guys. Oh. The guy. Uh, the guy in the Alpha and the guy in the Babies, there's always going to be a guy in the Alpha for sure. So, please swap for that and then... It's an interesting dynamic when walking the pro field because the veteran players always seem to know exactly what they want to do, then help all of their new talent to fine-tune what they should be doing. Damage continues to bring on young talent because even though they won't always get the playing time, they know the youth will eventually be the future of this program and want to take every opportunity to pass on their knowledge and experience. Once they're done walking the field, Jason rounds up the team to check into the hotel. Five rooms total, correct? Yeah, unless you have an extra. I wish. <laughs> Say hi, Caesar. Say, oh yeah. <laughs> Here, go side. <laughs> Oh yeah, you guys are. <laughs> you guys are inseparable. Yeah, you yeah. think you're like, I wonder if I'm going to room it. <laughs> oh, a little butt scooting going to be happening here pretty soon. What are you doing? You're not getting my shoes. Yeah, we're all the way up top. Oh, there we go. Not everything goes according to plan though as every room is a solitary king-sized bed, as opposed to the doubles that they should have been. Uh-oh. Well, what? One bed. Yeah, Are they all bad. like that? Wow. Fuck. Now, if you want them, they can trade with me. Can you? Yeah. Yeah, double? Yeah, give paintball team all kings. Ask them if they have doubles. They requested doubles. And she, he requested doubles. Tell him he's freaking out right now, and they gotta fix it. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, they're changing my shirt. Shoot, yes, yeah. Sydney old pit bull. That's what I was saying. You have a double though? Yeah, I have a double. Do you guys care coming up here? No. No, no, I don't give a shit. Why would I care? Let me go ask those guys. Hey, put shit on it. Born sweat. Oh, oh, my boy. Like, I'm not exaggerating. I haven't slept one hour in two days. Oh, my God. <laughs> the non-stop repeat schedule of work and paintball takes its toll on us all. The family mentality of damage runs deeper than most realize for Jason Edwards, as during the week he also holds down the managerial position for Tampa Bay Damage founder CJ Botsalis. Like three years ago I needed a job, uh, a lot of stuff happened when I was a cop so I wrote him Message him was just like, hey man, you help me out, you know, I, I want to work, I still want to play paintball, etc. So he, uh, he let me come down here and I started working. Worked here for about a year and then I left to go back to Orlando with the family. Moved back over here, started working again and just promoted me to shipping manager. So I've just been doing all, the whole shipping and receiving end of it. And it's a good business, man. You can le you learn a lot and that's what I always said about paintball is don't burn your bridges and definitely been a good journey for me. I'm 
So this here is the, our inline machine. It actually feeds off these large rolls. The large roll puts the sheet through the machine and then there's a mold board up there that imprints all the molds. So this thing just makes an amazing amount of product in like a very short amount of time. When it's said and done, it'll be like a 90. So obviously we have white fittings, colored fittings, um, extra machines for everything. And this is a grinder that's actually not being used right now. On all these shelves you have loose stock. You know, all the parts are just sitting on shelves. And then everything from this rack over is all stock that's already been put in boxes. Everything in the front is everything that's going to be shipped out today. So we do a lot of business. We ship anywhere from 1,500 to 2,500 cartons a day. Probably the hardest thing is knowing all the box sizes, all the parts that go in the boxes, where they go, certain customers' traits. It's definitely a lot of work. He's evolved into this workhorse, and that's all that this guy does now. He's like 70 hours a week, and then he spends like the other waking hours working out and then he might take a five minute break to eat a power bar and then he's spending the rest of the day on his phone getting people the stuff they need for the team booking tickets like i don't understand how he does what he does where does he get the time it's good to have people that uh work for you that you feel like you know you know what kind of guys they are and that you can trust and that they're trying to do a great job for you so i think that the uh, whole paintball tryout for eight years to get the position here was really a good idea we wouldn't be damaged at all if it wasn't for cj he put his neck out in line, put his own money out, got us to every event, built our team, helped us practice. He did everything. There would be no damage. There wouldn't be a Florida pro team left if it wasn't for CJ, so CJ's the man. The reason that I continued on with the team is because, you know, it, it, it took a lot of effort and a lot of commitment on my part to build what we had built, and I felt that I owed something to all these guys who have given up all this time and all this effort to me and for a long time it's been tough for me to let go of being involved with the team and playing because I, I truly love it it's awesome but it was just a time for me to make that change in life and uh, I felt like if I was going to take a step back it wouldn't be fair to just cut ties and let them go on their own so I felt like I needed to be in the background a little bit even if I wasn't going to be able to play it I just felt I owed it to the guys and that's why I was still around. Requested doubles. I'm telling you, he's freaking out right now, and they gotta fix it. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, shirt. Shoot, yes, yeah. Sydney old pit bull. That's what I was saying. Probably wondering what Papa Edwards meant when he said, "Send in the pit bull." This is a reference to none other than the nicest lady in the world, Mama Edwards, or Mrs. Edwards, as we call her. Even as grown men. Sometimes the Edward brothers still need to call him mom for backup. You are awesome. Thank you. This will help out a lot. Jean called and said Jason's freaking out. So I called around. Hotels everywhere are book solid. Couldn't get any rooms. So I went back up to speak to the manager. Checks the computer. Jason's confirmed that he did request double beds. Nothing he could do. Nobody he could switch around for. And wanted to know what he could do to make it better. And I'm like, well, damage is done already, what can you do? He goes, I'm not exactly sure. I said, well, what about breakfast? Can you compensate breakfast for the team? He goes, I can do that. So when he started handing me one, I'm like, no, for the whole weekend. So he handed me Friday's breakfast, Saturday's breakfast, Sunday's breakfast, and whoever's staying on Monday gets breakfast. So at 11 bucks a person for breakfast, that definitely adds up. There's two extra for you. Thank you. They got us breakfast all weekend for the whole team. Let's just get straight to it. What do you want? Caesar. What do you want? Nothing? I don't believe it. I told him. When the team isn't happy, Mama Edwards isn't happy. If things aren't going our way, my mom's gonna try and fix it. She's gonna find a way to make it work. And there was no other rooms, but we got, what, 50 free breakfast tickets? She thinks that's her job is to take care of us, and we all love it. <laughs> Group hug. Every Group day, hug. every day. That's awesome. Makes yep. my life amazing in the morning. Yep. I, I heard you say that too, I'm like, she's gonna get it. Are you a good, ha are you a good housewife, you know how to make a bed? However, Mrs. Edwards isn't the only one taking care of the damaged boys at events. While all of the damaged players are getting a good night's rest and a five-star breakfast to look forward to, Pops and his crew wake up at 6 a.m. to begin their usual pre-match routine. Uh, this is just our uh, morning ritual. We get to the event, we chase down our pods and get them turned, see what they look like. We had a little mud left in them from Texas uh, mud bath. 
I always preach to them, you know, when, you, when you're done loading, go ahead and shut the lid and put it in a nice grassy area. Hey, remember guys, when you, when you put the pods, shut the lid, nice grassy area, okay? <laughs> okay, you know, I mean, we always go over this, but you guys never remember that. Some of the guys have trouble retaining that, but you know, it, it helps our job. So we just gotta do what we gotta do to make the players like they, they can just have to play paintball and not have to not worry have about to worry. Yep. You know, not have to worry about anything else other than playing paintball. That's our job is done. And I do this because I love paintball, but, but more importantly because uh, I love Tampa Bay Damage and, and the relationship that I have with Pops and Pickle and the boys has become uh, very close one and uh, they've accepted me into their family which is in my opinion a big high honor. We work hard though. Oh, there, no ain't, doubt. there ain't no slack. <laughs> there ain't no slack time. And these virtue pods are just remarkable. They yeah, hold uh, they them. hold more paint. They don't pop open. They got this uh, magical latch here and it's just they spring open. We'll see how number 238 is going to go for us. We'll get a bag of each lot and then we can test that specific lot. We'll be able to check the fill and check the bounce. You know, I mean, that's what we got to do. Our job is to check the paint and get the team the best paint they can have. And Dylan's scouting games, doing what he does. Baby Alpha and home looked snake the whole time off the breakout. Just starting games, trying to figure out team's tendencies and just trying to see how the field plays out. Right now, a lot of the teams are trying to push the middle and it's working for them unless the other team makes it wide and they get trapped inside. One thing that our team has that other teams don't have is like an extremely dedicated pit crew. Hops, Dylan, and his guys Mario, John, we'll have taken a few extra and other people here and there, but they're just on top of their game. They're there from sun up to sundown basically. They'll be there way before we get there. They basically make it where when we get to the field, all we have to do is play paintball. We don't have to worry, we don't have to stress. We're not running around trying to figure out all the little minute things that they take care of. And in those little things, they build up. Like if you don't have that help, you'll notice you're gonna be a lot more stressed out. We all pretty much have like our own little issues, our own little problems we have to work through before we start playing. Some of us have to stretch a little more than others. We're getting old, you know? So that, that extra time allows us to, uh, to loosen up. Go boys! I like how they're doing the new split deck style. It seems like it's faster pace, more entertaining for the webcast. You can watch four teams playing at one time instead of just two. So far, it looks good. Remember, there's a game between us, but whatever. When you get in, get ready for that next point. What's happening is you only get 40 seconds after that point ends, and people are starting with four, three, whatever, because they're in here bullshitting. So get in, get air cleaned up and paint, and then you can talk about the game. Be yeah. hey, chill, man. Just hey, enjoy the game. We have to win everything. Let's go. Three, two, three. One, two, three. Team! Chatting. Brian and Tim will be the ones who are going to have to decide because they're going to be on that first line. Okay. If one of them retire, then they know to like okay. cycle out. Okay. These are so the only two main setups, the center push. So if you first. call center push or fast snake, he's going to go. You're going to have to watch the game and see who's tired. Yeah. Okay. Let Alex watch us and tell us what we're doing wrong, what the other team's doing. I'd rather you be in charge of like calling shit. So Alex has come out to help us, Alex Lundquist. He has tons of paintball experience. And one thing that we noticed in Dallas was it was hard for me to like, you know, play a point, which typically I'm alive pretty long in that point, and then rush in and try to like get everything together for the next point. So we went ahead and we made some basic plays, picked out some lines, and Alex has been like scouting not only the team that we're playing, but he's also been watching us and telling us basically our tendencies and if like he sees anything that we need to or adjust quickly in the match. I'm loving it. I mean, I, I was just saying to some of them, I'm like, I'm missing playing so much. And this is as close as you can get without actually being on the field and playing. I feel like I'm participating a bit, which is just my heart beats so much for paintball. And to be here and helping out some of my former teammates and many guys that I've been playing with or against for years and years and years, that feeling is, is pretty great. So here we go. On the breakout, Tampa Bay Damage trying to get out towards the snake side. Looks like they lost the body early. Not making any excuses or anything, but playing against impact. We have literally the least amount of practice on this field than almost anyone out there. We weren't able to fly in early enough to play a couple hours on the field before the event. So we only got to play on this field one day against the Russians. And that one day, you know, you're, you're going to learn a little bit, but you're not going to learn everything. So we went out running wide. You know, we thought it was going to kind of be like our practice. 
where they had enough experience on the field to be like, all right, look, it's, you're not going to make it out wide. So they smoked us off the break, and when we adjusted, there's a few people on our team that have a hard time adjusting. I think they get egotistical and they want to just like still push and push and push. And it took us like four or five points to figure out, sack up. If you got to play inside out paintball, then you got to play inside out paintball. Everett all the way up into the center. That's what the damage needs. They need to get play that center of the field there. Finally. Got a couple kills. There we go. Yep. Damage finally starts getting on. Gets a couple kills. Two Gs off the break. You know, yeah. yeah. That, that, that worked really good. Yeah. I mean, we were just trying to figure out what to do. They won the first five points, and we had no fucking idea. And then we were just putting shit together every single point, and finally at the end, we figured out what to do and we won three straight points doing that. And then we would have won the fourth, but we ran out of time. Unless they can hit the three ball from deep, it's gonna be over. 16 seconds left. Buzzers only count for one in this series as Impact is rolling guns, locking it up. Damage unable to get a point there at the very end. not working for us is like if someone's saying oh you should go here and you should go there that's not the person that's actually doing that so they don't know what's happening you know like I get that we can come off and say like oh I got shot crawling around the beam so on and so on and it only really worked if we were able to practice this layout a bunch I think you could go out and dictate your side like one person can tell everyone what to do so I think right now as a team we should think of three consistent plays that work good and then if we get leads like good leads then we, we should audible and, and fuck around with some other shit. Two out of the three plays you should a baby the third play should be no baby. Two at home, two at Alpha. We left Dallas trying to plan on doing set plays, set lines, things like that. With this new layout and then releasing two different fields and not knowing which field you're going to be playing until two days before the event, we weren't really able to make proper plays. So we just kind of like said, all right, you know, this guy's playing good on this side with this guy. These three are playing good on this side. And they would go out and we were kind of like freestyling, like trying to figure out what worked and what didn't work. So after the loss to Impact, we jotted down some ideas and things that you know Alex saw, that Pickle saw, things that we saw as players, and we used what we felt was working the best and wrote down some solid plays. Let's do play one, two alpha, two home, and a baby. That's play one. You wanna go with letters, A? Yeah. So that way you're not doing line one. All right, so play A, all right? Let's do play B. Alpha, home, turret, baby. Where should the fifth be, two home or way out? All right, so one risk. So line B, you're gonna pick one of the three far snake bunkers, and then it's alpha, turret, home, and baby. All right, let's do play C. Let's go Xbox, alpha, home, baby, and then that fifth, that the guy that would audible that would be either double alpha or double home, and then go no, yeah, or turret, yeah. Like the secondary, he can do whatever he wants. C for center, B for breakout, A for safety. <laughs> I don't know how A could be safety, but it seems safe. Let's be smart, let's fix everything that we just fucked up. I think like, we know what we fucked up, we don't need to talk about it, let's just fix it, you know? Yeah. So talk to each other, what do we describe just chatting? Chatting, 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 So the very first point against Aftershock, I remember looking over towards our snake and seeing it was Timmy over there and I was like, yo, you doing all right? And he was like, hey, we're down a body. And then two seconds later, hey, we're down two bodies. And I'm like, oh, great. So I look over at Jacob. He's sitting there battling it out, battling it out. Chicago Aftershock, five strong for them. Looking good here in this first point. Let's see if they can capitalize. Jason Edwards trying to roll his gun. I think he might have got that shot in on I yeah, think that I was mean, Dizon that got shot. Looks like another body dropping for Aftershock, which is gonna even the count up. So it's gonna be three on three, 12 minutes and 28 seconds to go. Still no score in this match. There's one in the snake, two in the middle. So I, I make a move down the Doritos and I start to get low on paint. So I'm conserving my paint. I come out and I battle with So Seen and I gave him the good old one ball. Hey, we go, Taurus! Jason! Hey. James called my name and I'm like, yo, you need help? What's up? And I look over, completely out of paint. Just, he's scratching the back of his pack and I'm like, oh, great, cool. Here, let me see if I can throw you a pod. So I put my arm behind my back and, well, I'm out of paint. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. You know, it's three on two. Look over at Timmy, this man's got no paint. All right, we gotta make something happen. I make a move down the Doritos again. I'm looking at LJ in the in the Xbox. He just plays peekaboo with me for a little bit. So I wait till he looks at me and then he goes back in and I make a move to confuse him. Oh, 
Ooh. on Woodley, and Jacob just one-balled Woodley. That was ridiculous. Here comes Jason Edwards cutting through the middle of the field. McKenna over there in Snake 2. What a nice job of winning a low-body situation. That long point and us winning that long point, I think, was what we needed. That teamwork was something that we didn't really have a chance to use against Impact because we were trying to score points so fast. So I liked that being the very first point against Aftershock. It just kind of had our rhythm going pretty sweet right away. Out, it looks like damage staying in the pocket, not risking a body out here on the D side of the field. And now making their move over there towards the snake. Holiday, one of the fastest guys in the sport. Anytime we first start a tournament, you get your draw, and it's always four teams, or it always has been. And I immediately look for okay, where's our hardest game, and where are the games that we should win on paper. I mean, really, any team can beat any team. But we went one and one yesterday, and then today we had AC Dallas in the morning and then we had Dynasty at the end of the day, which I thought was perfect because AC Dallas is a good team. They're gonna run around, so they're actually gonna test our sweet spotting. They're not gonna give us you know, a whole lot of stuff. They're a good team. They're a pro team now. But ultimately, I thought we were gonna win that one, or we should win that one on paper, and then I figured it'd be a battle between us and Dynasty. So now, here we go. AC Dallas trying to get on the board against Tampa Bay Damage. Tampa Bay Damage up by one. It looks like we might have a penalty. Yeah, so penalty being thrown. It looks on, like on Holiday, because Holiday's the one doing the, wait, where am I hit? I thought the ref was calling out uh, maybe LP, and we're getting a penalty, but the ref was actually calling me out, and I was like, well, that's not possible. I didn't get hit at all. No one even shot my way. I really thought LP was the one that got it. He's the guy that rides the line. I don't need to, you know. <laughs> Tampa Bay damage with the in and out play. Not working for them as Timmy Probes and Jason Edwards both getting clapped up. Damage now in Snake 2, looking down the wire. And finally, there goes Nathan Roberts on into the snake for AC Dallas. I think damage might have just crept. And he does all the way on to AC Dallas' side of the field. But I think Ninos picked him up. That was Brian Smith. I saw the ref come in. He gets pulled out. So I'm like, all right, I jump in the snake, which normally I play Dorito side. And uh, it was kind of confusing me because I didn't play that spot in practice. I played it a couple points. Not really enough to know what I was doing. But look down the wire. I almost catch the kid. I missed him. And then I jump into snake, too. We're looking down the wire at each other. I get low on paint, glass hopper. There's a guy across the field in the 30 Dorito on the inside just watching me. He won't let me go anywhere. I'm like, all right. I had no paint, so I thought, you know, maybe if I come out and act like I shoot at the kid, I, I put him in. 
So he went in, and I saw him go in, so I was going to run the wire. Here he's going to make a big move, and he's going to get in a bunker. He does not know that Bluey's there, and he gets stuffed by Bluey. Bluey stays alive. Bluey's trying to get a penalty, but no, he gets taken out. And here comes the launch on the opposite side of the field. I make the move down the inside to go bunker the kid, and nothing came out. And then when I'm running past him, he turns around and shoots me in the ass. And the refs are like, oh man, this kid spun bad. So they throw a major, and then the kid argues with him. He's like, he didn't even shoot me. And they took the major away because I didn't shoot him. What a huge point here. Yeah, somebody's got to blow this horn. There's the towel thrown in. Hey, we know that we just threw it away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've thrown a lot away. Yeah. Let's step it the fuck up, regroup. Good communication and shit. We just can't die stupid. Hey, All right, ready. Guys? This point's about to end. Now we're here back in this game between AC Dallas and Tampa Bay Damage. Nico Hyde chops up, Paul Everett trying to go up the middle. That was the first team that has shot me going up to the X, and they shot Holiday going wide on the other side. So you weasel two guys on the break and you're playing a five on three, you should win every time. Hey, two minutes left to go. AC Dallas with the bodies and the field position, but Jason Edwards getting shot and Damage gonna throw in the towel. You have one real game and one quick game. Let's take the quick game now. It's gonna be a lot easier to take quick game now than it is in the Damage switching, making that switch back. Sending Jacob Edwards out here first to the Dorito side. Going back to how they were playing yesterday. Jason Edwards filling out to the snake side tower. And here comes Jacob Edwards on the offensive all the way to the 50, running and gunning. Nobody picks him up. He's in the 50. Can he get a shot across the field? Here comes Edwards now trying to put more pressure on that back corner bunker. Gun fighting for his team's life right now in this tournament. Under 30 seconds. Probst is backing him up. Edwards is just feasting over here. Jacob Edwards, three confirmed kills for him. Well, somebody from Tampa Bay Damage has to get all the way to that flag station. 14 seconds left, down by two. They're going to get this. Not going to be enough. Yeah, Todd, probably going to get this point, but there's just not going to be enough time here to get the other point, which they need to tie it up. I want to go. I want to go. This game's going to be different, Jake. This game's going to be a lot different. They're going to be heavy guns, and they're going to be in the back, and they're going to be waiting. When you drag the point out, it only takes one or two mistakes to lose a game. Yeah, but that's why we're losing. It's because we're playing like we're going to lose. Fucking kill them, dude. People shoot paintballs back at you. You shoot them. One of the points we're losing. Dude, we're playing like pussies is what I'm saying. Let's fucking go. I'm tired of sitting back, dude. I mean, I had the day of my life yesterday, and I just got switched. I don't like that at all. I agree that he should be probably going to be the attacker on the Dorito side. But we can't just while out over there either. Let's go talk about it out there. Come on, everyone. Seems like the field is actually playing in favor of the aggressor right now. Yesterday it was straight up play inside out. Now it's the teams are playing their run around. I agree with the fact that the aggressive team is winning. Yeah. At the same time, then you have people like on our team, like Jerry Prince, saying like we're being, we're playing like bitches and shit. We're not being aggressive. Multiple times we were in the snake, in the X, down the Doritos, everything. It's just shit didn't go our way. With you being in there, go ahead. If I'm gonna kill people down the Doritos, which I am, I mean, people are gun battling with me and they have no chance. Why take me away from that? I know how to talk to my brother. I can't be like, hey, I really want to do this because Jason always has an input. If I say, Jason, I, I need to do this, he think about it. And sometimes I can get it through his head that I'm right. But most of the time I'm wrong. Most of the time he's right. But when I'm right, I'm right. We can't lose a match and just be like, oh, that's because I wasn't playing that spot. Like, I'm sitting in there, I have the worst job in the world. I'm sitting there just shooting a bounce shot for eight pods, and then I run out and people die. I have to try to one ball people. You have to do what you have to do to make the team work. We're not being aggressive, that's why I'm freaked out. I don't want to hear we're not being aggressive though, Jake, because the first point, when you died and I died, Holiday was in the snake. I jumped in the snake. The game we lost, where I ran in bunker with their Dorito guy, you were in the snake. We were already in the 50 snake when they pulled Brian out on rub. We were in the X. We were in everywhere. We just need to push more than team again. But this is an overall team thing that we need to work on. If you think that you're the best one in the Doritos, we can go back to that. Jimmy will shoot the Dorito side, I'll shoot the snake side, and I'll fill over with these guys. I just think it's our teamwork in the middle of the game that we're losing. This is what we don't need is your attitude right now. Like, we need to go back to, let's fuck motherfuckers up. We only have one more shot. One Winner chance. go home, yo. This is a Sunday final for us. Basically, they're probably in the exact same boat. They probably need this game to do. So they're going to want it just as bad as we do. We need to want it more. And it's we block, cannot we make can't fucking mistakes. There can't be mistakes in this fight. We've never even seen anything like this. How you doing?
Do we agree that that would probably be one of the best things to do? Because yes, it's yes. going to constantly make them have to shoot at them. Alright, let's get ready. Bring it in. One left. Hey, erase that shit. Erase that last game, bro. We got fucking robbed. We know what we need to do. Let's play like we've been here before. Let's have some swagger and play as a team. And we will win this game. We're not going to have bad luck again, okay? Get it in. Hey, fucking loud from your balls. Like you want it. After the AC Dallas game, what we found is that the teams that are being aggressive for whatever reason today is different. People are making spots, so we decided that on the snake side we were going to go out far every game. Dynasty was able to get a shot off the break, which really helped him out. Ryan Green spent getting a major penalty for Dynasty. Oh wow, that is not going to help things here. So it's just Kyle Spicka left alive. I wasn't happy with playing the center guy, and I told Jason after the match, I was like, look, dude, I want to, I want to go back on Dorito's side. I want to play my position. I, I know what to do over there. Everyone was talking, and they were like, yeah, I think that's the best thing to do. So we switched it up for the Dynasty match, and it worked. And now, oh, Dalton Vanderbilt God. gets a minor penalty. So Dynasty losing three bodies, two off a of penalty. After our loss against AC Dallas, I think it, it kind of hit him hard that he felt like he could have done more damage over on the Dorito side. Everyone on our team is very strong-willed and everyone has an opinion. And I made sure coming into this year, coaching and playing, that I'll sit there and I'll listen to your opinion and I'll voice my opinion. And then we'll meet somewhere in the middle. He's one of those people who doesn't take losses very well. So his temper was already up a little high. But I mean, he was right. He did need to go back to the Dorito side and I need to shift over and play more on the snake side or up the middle. So this time he was right. And we also decided that regardless of being up on points or whatever, we were going to push. We weren't going to push stupid. We were going to push at least get to the 50, and then we would decide to go through from there or maybe just hold it up a little bit. That's the end of paintball. That's how we play fucking paintball. Yeah! I plan to win. Play to win, but go, so fellas. Keep it up. Brad Greenspan gets toasted trying to go up to the A. Damage got some spacing out there going to both corners. Spica goes down as well. Things just not going Dynasty's way right now. They're down a bunch of bodies here. Tampa Bay damage up by two, 13, 39 to go. Dynasty made some mistakes in the beginning of that game, getting some penalties and allowing us to get a lead. And what our team does best is dictating the pace of the game. And when we can slow down and play the clock against you, you're not gonna beat us. And that's kind of what happened. I think they were kind of trailing uh, an 0-3 lead that entire game really just trying to fight to get back into it. This is how we play paintball is what I was thinking. We control people. We move down the field slow and steady as a team and we just pinch people out of their spots. We just make people uncomfortable in their bunkers. If we have dominance, people don't like to play us. Jacob Edwards jumped into the 50 wedge over here on the Dorito side. So now damage in control of both 50 structures. Under 10 minutes to go. Oh, go. and again, CeeLo. CeeLo, I think, just got shot Spica. by Spica back out of the snake and shot inside. And then Jason Edwards off of that death comes back. Tactical retreat in order to watch over his brother. Jacob! 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 Looks like a little bit of an advantage for San Diego Dynasty here. Oh, here comes Jacob Edwards. Jacob Edwards has moved up, and now he's out in the open era blocking out cross field, and he gets shot, so kind of a big chance there by Jacob Edwards does not play into his factor. And Ryan, Ryan Greenspan shoots a huge cross field shot on Jason Edwards, and here comes San Diego Dynasty. Hey, next game that we're in 50 snake, I hit 50 Dorito, Holiday, and it's a four on three. LP, Just Timmy. Hit me. And burn the whole clock. Oh, let them make that move. The Tampa Bay damage with a one point lead here. And it looks like a body drops Jacob Edwards. Dying over here on the D side, but looks like Jason Edwards' his brother able to make it up in the center. I think and Marcelo might have gotten shot. He comes off. Here comes Jason attacking the A. 
I think A-Rod sees him. He's waiting for him. Jason yeah. waiting, looking to get a good shot. Here's the gunfight between A-Rod and Jason Edwards. And A-Rod's going to try to launch, but he gets destroyed trying to get out. And Jason Edwards still alive in there. There's one point that I went up the middle and I was playing in the Xbox, the X everywhere. We shot two people pretty quick. I was just expecting Dynasty to blow the horn. You know, I could hear like four or five other guns shooting over there. So I was thinking we're good to go. You know, it's like myself and four others and they weren't blowing the horn. So I just want to basically let them know, like, look, we know we have the lead. And if I have to sit here all day and wait for you to blow the horn, I'll do it. So, you know, instead of sitting up in the middle and risking getting a penalty, like some stupid shot, everyone's trying to shoot me under the X. I just started to backpedal. Jason Edwards backing all the way up, all the way back up from the A, just retreating, reversing. I don't know if I've seen it. I don't think I've seen it. I don't think I've ever, ever seen, seen anyone that. tactically retreat like that. I made it all the way back to the back center pretty easily. And I think when I did that, their coach was like, okay, um, they're not going to come get us, so let's just blow the horn. Somebody just shot short right in the face. He comes walking off. Marcelo looking to make a move. He bumps out to the Dorito. He's clean. Jason Edwards standing up tall. He's going to come into the A from the center tower. Two minutes and 28 seconds to go. Nobody has dropped from damage yet. Two for dynasties. We were up like two or three points, and the time was getting low. And I was just head checking and keeping track of the guy in front of me and just making sure he didn't do anything crazy or try to run through. I wanted him to be alive. I wanted them to think that they had an opportunity to win the point so we could just run as much time off the clock as possible. I'll just look at you. Hi, I'm not going to shoot back. We're gonna burn this time off. It wasn't until they really just tried to make an aggressive push up the other side that we started shooting bodies out. Four on two situation right now. Ryan Greenspan looking to get on the offensive. Marcelo Margot sitting in his mini Dorito. Once again, I'm in the X. They're trying to shoot me from underneath, around, bounce shots, everything. If you don't jump over any little gap inside the X and you get shot in the foot, you're gonna hate yourself. So it's better to just look stupid jumping around in there and not getting shot. Here comes Ryan Greenspan. He's gonna fully commit. But Ryan Greenspan misses his shot on Jason Edwards. And there goes Ryan Greenspan. So now Dynasty really should think about conceding this point unless they're just going to hope to God that Marcelo Margot can pull something Holliday's crazy off. Just going to walk over and press the buzzer. He looked right at Marcelo and was like, I don't need to shoot you. Damn, boy! We already lost the impact, so that was decided. So we had to beat Dynasty. I knew against them, we have a pretty good track record. We kind of go back and forth. But I thought that we would beat AC Dallas and then we would battle out with Dynasty, deciding whether we're in or out, which I guess we did end up having a battle out Dynasty, but I felt like we had control of the whole game. But AC Dallas, you know, they had control of the game. They were beating us, yeah. So the game's over, right? Did yeah, yeah. yeah. They, didn't, they didn't get the point. They didn't get the point. Yeah. Five to two. Good shit, boys. Good shit. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! Bracket, new format, new everything. There's tears and Interpool and blah, blah, blah. I mean, we don't even know what the hell it is. We just came out here to play. The way it worked out, the two teams that we ended up beating were the teams that we needed to beat. So we went in first seed in our bracket. So that's awesome. In my mind, when we have four games, if I win three, then I'm in for sure. And unfortunately, we only won two. It was real confusing in the end. For some reason, we're number one. And you guys do the math. Today started poorly, but ended great. And tomorrow, redemption to play impact again and I'm hungry. We're not gonna go down zero to five this time. Hey, I'm glad to have you back over on the Dorito side. It definitely helps. I gotta say you guys give me a full control of the line so we should on dynasty but I don't wanna toot my own I don't want to toot my own horn but I'm gonna toot it. <laughs> Dylan's definitely the new coach. Hey, Dylan. He put me in every point. I like him. <laughs>
Yeah. We're scouting in play, but Boom played good against them. They've been in like baby and Monday on the line. Oh boy. We got a running ref. Running towards Stan Zach, he's clean. Alright, so we're not learning anything from this because we can't really tell what the hell Boom's doing to win. So let's just watch our match so we can see how sweet we are. Sweet! Two! Let's put us on! Oh shit! F and G! F and G! Fast forward it! F and G! What are you doing? Are you allowed to film this early? Isn't there rules? Yeah, breakfast. That kid's dream. Carbon out. Breakfast of champions. Go back to Canadia. Because you don't belong here. Now we're playing Impact again, and the first time we played Impact, we had the least amount of practice on this field out of any professional team out here, so we feel a little bit more confident now. Two minutes, plenty of time, boys. Nothing to worry about. Good holiday. Everybody good? Well, let's go, everybody. Everybody, get in. Fucking get in here, boys. Hey, Sunday what? people. This is what it's all about, kids. Hey, nobody picked us for top four. We're the only ones that know we're the best team here. Let's fucking show everybody. Let's go, baby. Hey, loud. Loud. Let's get it. Loud. Make it fucking loud. Hey, line one is Jason, Jake, Holiday, LP, and Timmy. Let's go, boys! Let's get it, boys! No one really runs out wide on us when we play Impact because they know how good we are at shooting off the break and they don't really want to take those risks. And They definitely saw how I was gun battling everyone and winning, but then they just stacked guns on me this match. I saw three guns on me, my mirror, back center, and the guy in the center shooting my way up in the tower. So, I mean, I really couldn't do much, but I could gun battle with three people. There goes Daniel Holiday for Tampa Bay Damage walking off. Jason Edwards getting shot out of his spot, so uncharacteristic death in his bunker. You don't want to see these guys dying out of their positions, and there goes another one, Jacob Edwards. He gets peeled off, and here comes Edmonton Impact going to score. Yeah, awesome. no, we just got to put you together. We were just falling out from Boston. Get back to like, hey, I'm doing this, you do this, that kind of thing. One to zero advantage right now for Edmonton Impact. Two bodies walking off for Tampa Bay damage early. And Impact is down two as well, so it's three on three quickly. Timmy Probst, he comes out to the Dorito side wedge. Nick Laval gets out though and gets some spacing here with Chad. Three on three, those are the three bodies left alive for damage. They're locked in the pocket, so Impact has much better field position over here. D side, they've spread the field. Somebody gets a shot in on Timmy Probst, he comes walking off. Gonna be tough for Daniel Holiday if Nick Laval makes this move up. Jason Edwards tries to make a fill back and he gets shot on the fill. Now Nick Laval to the 50-yard line. That is going to force Tampa Bay damage to concede the points. They like to shoot 20 pods a game, so you have to play them slower. And we weren't doing that. We were playing, trying to ram it down their throat, I guess. We were doing good on the break, and then we just weren't closing it out afterwards. So you have to find the five spots you can make alive and then work as a team to bump down the field, not just try and do everything on your own, because there's always going to be two guns in a lane, so you have to at least have you and your buddy putting somebody in in order to get you over. Nobody out wide except for Jacob. Jacob sneaks underneath the gun, does he? No, JC puts a ball in on and Jacob, and Jacob walks off. So now that's whole side open. Brian Smith's gonna come up to the A, into JC's mirror. Oh, looks like got clipped in the pack. Referee runs in, calls Brian Smith out. Yeah, and JC so still alive here in the A, so wheeling and dealing up there. Rainy Stanzak comes out of the back center, dies pop-up slide into Dorito one and grills up Timmy Probst. Spacing the field now, moving out to the outside. Here comes Jason Edwards on the play. He's coming to get Justin S Cornell. Nobody's picked him up yet. Smoke Justin Cornell. Nice move. It looks like a major penalty oh. on Justin Cornell, which will clear out the last player, Rainy Stanzak, who was running up and about to get shot anyway. Jason, Jason Edwards, the leader for Tampa Bay Damage, saving the day for his team here at this point. Hey. Hey. Hey, they got right, a major. They're you're not going to sit, but you have to relax. Fuck that, man. Don't come off the field and say no. Shit to you want to win? Listen yes, to I want to fucking win. I want to go. No, not when there's an X. We don't know what side he's on, bro. He was on your side. Just relax. Hey, they got a penalty. I they know. didn't have enough bodies. I know. Starting with four. We got this, boys. Let's go. Go, boys. Far side, boys. Far side. Lots go. of time. Let's go, boys. Hey, what are you These guys are going to have to tuck in, but Jacob Edwards is coming through the middle of the field. 
Into that 50 Dorito now. Timmy Probst in the outside mini Dorito. Shooting down the wire. But Rainey gets picked off on the inside. Towel. Point approved. I ran into the Alpha, which is the big, tall stand-up. But this time I was there for only four or five seconds before a ref came in to pull. I thought he was pulling LP out because LP was sharing the bunker with me. And the ref is pulling a penalty. He threw a yellow, which means he's going to pull one for one, which is, you know, unfortunate. But the only problem is he pulled me, he pulled LP, and then he went and grabbed Jason. It's a little mess up on the ref. As far as that, I mean, a red would have would have pulled all three guys. A yellow would not. Why? If yellow, then you pulled three good. No, I think it's all right. I got pulled. And LP, you got pulled? Yes. Oh. It's, it's already over. It's already over. I, th I thought LP got shot. But I actually turned around, it looked like I got nicked in the back. Yeah, he got shot. But either way, they pulled three guys, one through a yellow. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're up. Next down, we're on. on. Come on, damn it. Come on, boys. Hey, watch, watch, watch the real side of the house. Running and gunning all the way out. Get shot. Looks like Jacob Jake. Edwards having a hard time living against the off the break shots of Edmonton Impact. And here comes Justin Rabakov attacking up the middle, getting into that center tower. And there goes Brian Smith to get into the snake as well. So both impact and damage of a body in the snake. But see a running referee coming over and another body dropping as Timmy Probst got center punched in his goggles. And that is going to force point. Tampa Bay damage to concede the point, though they still had looked like two players left alive. We're locked in the middle, locked in the money. We have to shoot the money on the break if you guys want to go for the gun. Yeah, I got a blind spot to shoot Okay, so either that or go ahead and hurry. Impact score a fourth point, so we were kind of playing catch-up ball. I guess push the envelopes because, you know, we needed to score fast points. We were having a hard time in the blind zone, but one of the points I was actually able to get out alive, they would make my way up into the middle. As you can see underneath it, so I was able to wrap underneath it, get a shot off on their guy in their tower. After that happened, I was able to get into the X and kill their widest guy on the D side, which they ended up blowing the horn. There's Chad Bougere in that mini race bunker where he gets shot. He comes walking off, so just two bodies left alive. Not sure when Impact's gonna figure out that that play is not gonna work. Hey, we're on the far, let's go! Keep it up! Close, close side, bro! Let's go hard, On the breakout here, it's an Impact. Still with a little lead here on Tampa Bay damage. And yeah, looks like Impact throwing a body that way in the center, trying to get to the 50 yard line, but damage loses a body as well, snake side. Jacob Edwards actually makes it under two guns into the Dorito one. That was brilliant. And now he's heads up with Chad Bougere. Timmy Probst sneaks out of the back center to give Jacob Edwards some support. Play heads up. He's gonna try and make a bump out to the small Dorito. He does. Lamette and Bougere both still playing straight ahead, trying to gang up on Jacob. Jacob still. And they do, hit him right on the loader. Jacob Edwards tried to gun battle two people, got overpowered. I mean, it was kind of just a catch-up game. We couldn't really do much. We had to go after him, and they just hit. We couldn't get far enough down the field to get him. It looks like the towel is going to be thrown in for Tampa Bay damage. He's going to the middle. 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 He's going to I got shot in the very back of the head at the X, or like right at the end of my run up there. So I'm, I don't know. Bounced off something. Doesn't really matter. Where we lost that game was the first two points. We blew a four on four, and then we blew a three on three at the very next point. So had we won one of those or both of those when we're even body situations, that game would have gone a lot differently. I mean, it was really close back and forth match until the very end when we started chasing points. So that field is pretty hard to push through aggressively. I mean, it happens here and there, but it's, it's not easy against a good team. Oh my God, man. We just lost. There's no excuse for this tournament. I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna work my ass off to get better. This is the worst sound in paintball. When the air is coming out of the tank, that means vent's over, you lost. I'm picking my nose. <laughs> I think, you know, this tournament or in that match against Impact, it's four on four, the first point, and we ended up getting shot out of our bunkers. So there goes our mid game. And the second point, it was three on three. You know, we didn't drop a body against our bunkers again. So that right there makes the difference because uh, we were down five to three at the end of the match when we started getting crazy and trying to score points fast. So if we hadn't tightened up our mid game, we wouldn't have been in that situation to where we were trying to score points fast. It would have been vice versa. So we just need to go home, work on our mid game, and uh, you know, come back strong for the MAO.
at this level and on Sunday, you cannot win if you're making those mistakes. You have to win the even body situation. Then we lost, so when you get outplayed, it's hard to be mad at anybody other than yourself. So that's the conviction to work harder and be smarter the next time. Sure. Not very clean for now, but I'm the guy with the flosser for right now. You have a flosser, yes. Oh, yeah. I'll find that later. Can you sign this dude's tits for us? Yeah, you want to sign my tits, Nick? It's a new thing, dude. It is, dude. Oh my god, you can't even get this down, dude. I start working Ooh, out. It's right going over the armpit. See, Lowe's, I need you to sign this guy. Eric, walk yourself over yeah. here one time. Come here. <laughs> Go for the belly button. No, come on. Oh, you gotta sign around the belly button. Gotta give you a little tickle, bro. I already signed his titty, too. <laughs> Marpit's getting a lot of love. Oh, shit. You should probably use the microphone, right? Yeah. See, I do know this job better than you. Give me that. Get in there. Get in there. Kikuza. Oh, come on. You look, are sweaty. Look. Kikuza trying to fill me up. He always tries to do this. You guys even have ice in Tampa Bay? What the hell? Oh, yeah! <laughs> Bitches! Dude, hey, that is the most popular sport in our area. Is it really? Yeah, that place sells out all the time. Rays never. Rays, yeah. That's awesome. Hey, guys,